the I-70 killer, my niggas. Last time we did the killing of Eliza Lamb, the murder, the suicide, wherever the fuck it may be. Today, we're doing 29 days of terror. The hunt for the I-70 killer. Let's start off with the video and see what the video is talking about. Haunted family aides, the man known as the I-70 killer, Let's targeted women shit. up and down the interstate during the early 1990s. But the cold case remains fresh on the mind of a St. Charles detective. He's hopeful someone will come forward. This shit was on the I news. Investigator Chris Nagus reopens the file and gives us a Chris look who? at one piece of evidence Nagus. that could crack the case. These tin drawers contain files inside the St. Charles Police Department. Oh my God! During the investigation, this room is full of thousands of files related to the man known as the I-70, I-30. How many people did he kill? This is a composite drawing that was made from the witness. Detective Donald Stepp says these drawers contain. Nigga, look at all those. I'm not gonna rewind because I might get another fucking ad. To crime spree. Y'all see all those fucking files? Fetus is St. Charles shit? Oh, you're donezo. They left six people dead across You are donezo. Including 24-year-old Nancy Kitzmiller of St. Charles. May 3rd, 1992. It was a quiet Sunday. Kitzmiller was working at the Boot Village just off Interstate 70 at Zumbel Road. She was alone in the store. According to Detective Stepp, she wasn't even supposed to be at work that day. Oh, she was fuck, bro. Another employee. God damn! Uh! Alright, so the story we got so far, bro. They opened up the file case and it was like, this is all the files for the I-70 killer. The nigga has like a thousand plus bodies. He has to have a thousand plus bodies, bro. He killed people near that road? Fuck. So she came to work on her day off. She got called in. Imagine being the person that called in sick that day. Like, fuck, bro, I'm not feeling good. I'm gonna call in, you know, uh, Alyssa can work. And then she dies. At approximately 2.30 that afternoon, she was discovered shot to death in the back of the store. Is there any surveillance video? No, there was not. Were there any witnesses? No, there's not. Do you guys have a motive for the crime? No, we do not. Three years after They don't have any information. No evidence, no witnesses, no motive. If you don't have any of those three things, I'll tell you somebody that went to school to be a detective, you don't have shit. You're just sitting there with your dick in your hand at that point. After the murder, investigators offered chilling information. His motive has always seemed to be simply the thrill of killing. God in damn. 1992, before killing Kitz Miller, it was Robin Fuldauer, shot to death inside a Payless shoe store in Indianapolis. Why is he going to, why is he going to like hot spot locations? He went to a gas station, somewhere he can easily be caught. He went to a pay less. Somewhere you can easily be caught. Why is he going to fucking stores to do this shit? He's not stealing. Nobody's seeing him. He's walking in, blasting somebody, walking out, and then going along with his day. We're, we're only on three people right now. That was the second person. There's a third person right here. Three days later, two women were found shot. Three days in later? A bridal store in Wichita, Kansas. Patricia Smith and Patricia Majors stayed late to wait for a customer needing a cummerbund. So somebody, somebody called in like a late, like, we'll just say they called in a late order. Like, hey, I'm going to be there around like 9 p.m. Please stay open. I'll come by, pick it up. You know, I'll tip you guys. Whatever the fuck that is. He goes in there. He might have been the nigga that made the call. Goes in there late at night. Maybe that's how he's doing it, y'all. Maybe he's fucking... Maybe he's waiting until late at night where he knows nobody's going to be in these stores or locations. Y'all say coming, bud. <laughs> I, the joke was there, but that would have been too obvious of a joke. Neither would make it home. The case certainly stands out in the fact... Kill that both of them. Home. Dead. I spoke with Detective Tim Ralph of the Wichita Police Department. He worked the case 28 years ago. What does that he say? Oh, Ginger. Break, an eyewitness account. The customer the women were waiting late for arrived at the store and saw the man. The killer kind of... He saw him. To ...come in the store and the guy's like, no, nah, no, nah, ain't gonna do it. And uh, so he left at that time. This guy could have easily been a third victim. So somebody, okay, so the third, the third killing, bro, he killed two people. He's already has four bodies right now. Walking to place and just shooting people. The third time he got caught. But the nigga didn't do anything. He saw him kill two people and he was like, 
Y'all got that. Y'all got that. Walked and went his ass home. He easily, if he'd gone, if he'd gone back there, he'd have killed him. From that encounter, this composite sketch was created. That nigga looks like any regular nigga that works at Walmart. A regular ass pallet pusher at Walmart. A, a face that you'd see it just walk past and not give a fuck about. Like, who is this nigga? You can see this nigga walking past and just not give a fuck about him. Bro, ugly, no wonder he mad. Look at what Ray said. <laughs> White male, 22 to 32 years old. The nigga might be me. We're in the iceberg, are we? We're, we're gonna be in tier one for a while, my nigga. Investigators believe the key to solving the case is what police believe to be the murder weapon. It's distinct and looks similar to- Nigga, what the fuck is that? A blunderbust? Nigga. What is this old ass gun he's using? This nigga tell he this nigga killed Abraham Lincoln and then teleported to the 21st century can start killing niggas. What type of gun is this? That's the NES duck hunt weapon? Bro. <laughs> Who is this old ass pilgrim going around killing niggas? If you kill me with a weapon like that, I need a redo on life. I gotta have a redo on life. Look at look at what niggas are dying by. And that nigga walked in the store like mutiny, killing somebody. Like fuck no, I, I I have to have a redo. Authorities hope it will jog someone's memory. That you can't see that shit and not fucking remember that shit, bro. This fucking World War weapon. <laughs> oh hell no, that's a blicky that killed Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> you Apollo weapon in my VIP. You don't, you don't, you didn't lose it. Not that I took away anyway. Fucking jellyfish fields ass weapon. It's actually a historical remake of an, of an old German Navy. Pistol. Nigga, we know an old German weapon. Pan, explain. And it's the unusual thing about it is it's it's barrel is long enough to where the, the gun actually has a wooden forearm. Just two weeks after the double murder in Wichita, the killer struck again. This time it's Sylvia. Sur he got caught. Right. He got caught. We don't know if he saw the person or not, but reports had to instantly hit the streets after that. Hey, this is what the guy looks like. Be out, be on lookout for this guy. If this guy comes to your store, you know, be safe. Call the police, whatever the fuck. He doesn't care enough that two weeks later, he instantly goes and kills somebody else. He doesn't fucking care. They were literally, he was in every newspaper ever. And this nigga's still going to stores with cars out front and killing niggas. Ceramics in Terre Haute, Indiana. The only male victim, Michael McCown. Police believe the killer missed. That's another thing, bro. No motive, no evidence, no witnesses. We have one witness now, but he he was a fucking pussy. All this shit, and he has no like specific typing on who he's killing. We were like, oh, maybe he's killing women like the Zodiac killer did. Now he just killed a random ass man. Took him for a woman because McCown had long hair. What the fuck? Nigga, what? His image has haunted families and- What the fuck? Fetus, why'd you do that, bro? This nigga Fetus said, you are not- You are not finding this out. Nigga, it's probably your dad that did this shit. I believe the killer mistook him for a woman because McCown had long hair from the back. A week later, Nancy Kitchman- He thought he was a woman. Charles. Over the years, her parents have shared their grief. Nancy w was- like perhaps many of the people you Look know, at this nigga's forehead. Who was coming out and, and becoming successful as a young woman. Four days after Nancy died, Sarah Oh my god! A small store in he won't stop, bro. It's a long fucking line of this shit. One. Two days later. Two. Two days after that, he kills two people. That's already four. Two weeks after that, five murders. Two days after that, another one. Like, God damn, bro. This nigga is an unstoppable force. And there is no immovable object to stop him from killing these niggas. In Raytown, just outside Kansas City. It's been over three years and the I-70 serial killer remains on the loose. As the 90s... He did this shit for three years straight. The story fell out of the headlines. But for the families impacted, 
it will never be forgotten. Every single day, you, you think about her. He was never caught? It benefit society. Wait, 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 wait. Is that the theory that this nigga was never fucking caught? Bro, how? Are all these murders actually near the I-70 road? It has to be. This nigga killed who knows how many people. What the fuck? The theory comes into play like who the fuck was it, Fetus? I think that's where the theory is. Anytime there's an unsolved murder, there's always going to be endless theories on it. LMAO, yeah, when I had glasses and hair. He never got caught on 4K. What the fuck? It'll benefit us. Lots he never got caught on 7020p. This nigga never caught that got got caught ever, bro. Kits Miller. We're not going to give up on this case. We have individuals that are working on this case in several states, and several cities. This isn't a state. This is not a case that we're just going to let go to the wayside. Do you believe it is solvable? I believe this case is solvable. Nigga, if you ain't solved it 20 plus years later. That shit ain't soft. This nigga long gone or dead. For clue, Detective Step says the FBI has examined the case, and given the geography and the timing, profilers came to a conclusion that might offer help. This it's all, all along the I-70 road, bro. Here, 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 here. It seems like every time he killed somebody, he would just switch fucking sides of the road. Kill two here. Boom. Raytown. Boom. St. Charles. Boom. Hot. Boom. Indianapolis. Like, God damn. This nigga would just be driving down the road and be like, you know what? I'm going to kill somebody on exit 70 today. Swerve off. You know what? I'm going to kill somebody on exit 72. Swerve off to the left this time. Like, what the fuck? By FBI profilers. The profilers both believed, both groups, that the killer is from the Indianapolis area. Here we are all these years later. So he's from here. He killed somebody in his own hometown. Not giving a fuck. Chris, that's a question I wish I had an answer to. I do not know. Do you guys think he's still around? There's nothing out there saying that he is not alive. I believe he's still alive and out there. Holy I shit. I posted this suspect sketch on my Twitter and Facebook. Nigga, that's you! Nigga. He's right here! Indianapolis, Wichita, Kansas, Missouri. If I pronounce any of those wrong, suck my dick. Y'all are all northern niggas, bro. I'm not, I'm a fucking southern nigga. I don't know anything about Wichita. These horrible murders lasted until May and it stopped almost as quickly. However, the police behave that is un this unidentified killer has ties to nine altogether. Three of which in 1993 through 1994. Although connected to nine murders, only six are confirmed. Five women in a male, which is a mistake on the killer's part. So he he was only killing females, right? The fact this nigga let his hair grow out too long and was a mistake for a female was the only reason he died. Holy shit. Unsure of his modem, his MO at, was the same time. He would drive, possibly for work, and stop at various strip malls he might have been a truck driver. Holy shit. Then he's stopping the various uh, stores such as Payless Shoe Source, Bridal Shop, a Western Boot Store, and kill the woman working at the time. What the fuck? Oh, kill the woman working at the time with a 22 caliber pistol. At this part, at this particular time, his body count was up to five. His next kill happened in Terry Hot, Indiana. This time the victim was a male, but it's assumed that he was a mishap. He thought it was a female. God damn. The male had long hair, which was a ponytail, and was mistaken for a woman. So the fact that he was turned around, probably looking at fucking inventory, the guy walked in, shot him. Just because he looked like a girl from the back. Oh my god, bro. Other attempted murders proceeded to follow, yet thankfully two people survived the attack. So there was two survivors. One of which was due to a 22 caliber pistol jamming. Oh my god. His life was safe. His Okay, so here's the killer's MO. Walks in. Boom. Gets the fuck out as fast as he can. This time. 
walks in, the gun jams. He's not gonna stand there and still try to attempt to kill him, bro. This, you know what that tells me? The gun malfunction, he's not strong, bro. That's what that tells me. If he actually still wanted to kill the person, he could have easily put into a fight, grab something, still kill the nigga. He's gonna keep shooting because that's the only way that he's able to kill. Without the gun, oh shit, I gotta get the fuck out of here now. I'm not fighting this nigga. Runs out. Fighting takes too long? Exactly. And he, he's trying to get in there and get out. He's a skinny ass short white bitch. Let's see. Where the fuck was I at? Uh, the survivors were able to provide details on identifying the man and the composite sketch was made. Wait, that wasn't the survivor. That was the nigga that saw them getting shot and then ran away. That wasn't the survivor. He wasn't even in the situation. The reports... Maybe he did try to kill him and then the gun jammed or some shit. I don't know. The reports gave information to the killer being in his mid-20s to early 30s, well-dressed, with a clean cut and good hygiene, with a slender body frame and... God damn, how do you get... How do you get all that from seeing the nigga in fucking... In a, in a traumatizing situation? This nigga... This nigga good as hell with his fucking details. He almost got shot and he was able to remember everything about the situation, bro. Your brain, like... Your brain has a way of shutting down things that are traumatizing to you. He stood in front of him. He's more useless than, useless than Sakura. With the composite sketch, the police were able to follow leads that led to Herb Baumeister from, West, from Westfield, Indiana. A businessman who traveled quite frequently. What happened next created a shockwave of terror that was entirely unexpected. Wait, what? We didn't hear about this. I wouldn't forget about almost dying, Apollo. I don't know, bro. I almost died inside a car crash. Now I don't remember anything about that shit. Wait, they have his details, but not a pic of him? They drew up a composite sketch of him. Alright, so what the fuck happened? As the police began searching his property, they uncovered a vast amount of skeletal remains that totaled 11 people. However, they were all male, believed to be homosexual. Out of 11, 8 of them were reported missing. So they found a different nigga? They, they thought they found somebody that was like, they thought it was him and that it was just some other killer? What the fuck? Bro. How do you, how do you? <laughs> I would be mad as shit if my crime got uncovered by some random ass nigga out there doing other shit. The nigga, the I-70 killer was out there like, damn. I'm glad they got that, I'm glad they got that street youth off the street, like nigga, what the fuck? That is wild to me. He was either homophobic, he was mad he got no hoes. He was either homophobic, or he would sleep with the men and then kill them like right when they were unexpecting it. Cause he knew that would probably be the easiest way to kill them. He was either homophobic or he was also gay himself but just a gay killer, you feel me? He got no hoes because he's homophobic? Exactly. Alright, so they found some other nigga that wasn't even the same killer. Shortly after, her Baumeister committed suicide. It, it was also learned that he was the th he had throat cancer, but was currently in remission at the time. He also owned a 22 semi-automatic weapon, which further belief of him being the I-70 killer. Unfortunately, though, all, unfortunately, although expected as the I-70 killer, there weren't any females on his property. So it wasn't him, bro. He only killed women. He only killed women, bro. That wasn't him. It wasn't him. Even even the one man he killed, he thought was a woman. That was a completely different nigga, bro. With his suicide, it was unknown whether it, it was whether or not it was alleged involvement of the women who were murdered had anything to do with him. Nevertheless, the police were able to solve a lot of the cases after finding the male remains. So it wasn't a complete total loss. But the I-70 killer is still out there, bro.